All right, going to do a video on the Catholic doctrine of devils, known as the perpetual virginity of Mary. You probably see my cat roaming around there in the background, but the Catholic Church teaches that Mary was a perpetual virgin her whole life, and she never got married. She never had any other children after Jesus. Uh, let's see what the Catholic Church Catechism says on that, and compare it with what the Word of God, the Holy Scriptures, say. So this is paragraph 499 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It says. The deepening of faith in the virgin, virginal motherhood uh, led, to, led to the church to confess Mary's real and perpetual virginity, uh, even in the act of giving birth to the Son of God made man. In fact, Christ's birth, quote, did not diminish his mother's virginal, virginal integrity, uh, but sanctified it. And also the liturgy of the church celebrates Mary as a par theos, the, quote, ever virgin. So they call her the ever virgin. Sorry if I had a hard time reading that thing. It's just hard to read, which you know couldn't, couldn't care less because it's not it's not God's word. It's man's tradition. But they call her the ever virgin. So they're saying she had no other children after Jesus Christ, and that she was a virgin her whole life and she never got married. Really? Let's see what the Word of God says about this. Turn to Psalms 69 verses 8 to 9. I am become a stranger unto my brethren, and an alien unto my mother's children. The zeal, for the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. Okay? This is, you know, a foretelling of Jesus Christ. You know, the fact that he had other children. Why do I say that? Because David is a typology of Jesus Christ. David, uh, Jesus Christ come from the, came from the root of David. Uh, John chapter 1 verse 11 says he came unto his own, his own received him not. Well, who were his own? The Jews. And Jesus Christ, you can read that in John chapter 7, was from the root of David. He was the seed of David. So David is a typology of Jesus Christ. And also, Jesus Christ, you know, you could say his physical ancestor in a way. But, uh, now, obviously Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is eternal, obviously. But, you see here, my, mo my mother's children unto my brethren. So Mary had other children, very clearly. His mother's children, plural. Okay, turn to Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 to 47. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. And one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. His mother and his brethren? Who would his mother be? Obviously, Mary gave birth to the physical body of Jesus Christ. Even, even the Catechism says that, that she gave birth to him physically. But his brethren too? Um, how does a virgin have more than one? How does, a, how does a virgin give birth? You know, because it was a virgin birth. If he has brethren, how does a virgin give birth to his brethren if she was not married? It's that simple. His brethren. Of course, the Catholics will say, well, it was referring to his cousins. I mean, just ridiculous way to try to twist that text and make it line up with their main, vain man-made traditions. Turn to Matthew chapter 13, verses 53 to 56. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence, and when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished, and said, Whence hath this man, hath, whence hath this, man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the is is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? So you have James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, four brothers and his sisters, plural, which would indicate at least two sisters. So Mary had at least at least you know conservative estimates because sisters would indicate plural would indicate at least two at least six other children after Jesus Christ. She was not a virgin her whole life. It's that simple. She got married and she had at least six other children after Jesus Christ. Now why do I say the perpetual virginity is a doctrine of devils? Well, I'll turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 to 3. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with the hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Okay, I call it a doctrine of devils because forbidding to marry is a doctrine of devils. Forced celibacy, celibacy and, and something stuff along those lines are doctrines of devils. So saying that Mary was a virgin her whole life and she never got married, uh, that's a doctrine of devils. It's forbidding to marry. 
It's that simple. She was not the mother of God. She's the mother of Jesus Christ in his physical body. But Jesus Christ has always existed. John chapter 1 verse 1 and 3. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Paraphrasing, of course. But Jesus Christ has always existed. There's never a time where he was not in existence. Mary gave birth to his physical, you know, him, him in the flesh. But he's not, she's not the mother of God. And her Catholic, of course, Catholics will say, well, we don't teach she is the mother of God eternally. But by calling her the mother of God, you are essentially saying that she is the mother of God. It's ridiculous. But Mary was not a virgin. And saying she was a perpetual virgin her whole life and she never got married, that's a doctrine of devils. It's just abstaining from marriage. It's that simple. So don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. They have set aside the word of God for their vain man-made traditions, which Jesus Christ rebuked the Pharisees for in Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 to 9. So anyway, don't be deceived by Catholicism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.